Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Padlet is a fantastic digital tool to use in your classroom. If you haven't already seen my full tutorial video, I will link that for you in the description box. It's a few years old, but it does a good job of covering the basics for getting started. Today, I wanted to share eight Padlet updates that have come out in 2023 that will revolutionize the way you use it as a teacher. Padlet is essentially like a virtual bulletin board where you can not only collaborate with others, but also incorporate multimedia such as text, images, video files, audio files, and so much more. You can create a free account. It's known as the neon level, which it says it will allow you to create up to three free Padlets but you can actually create up to five, okay? Just keep that between us. It's like a little loophole. However, there also are options to upgrade to a gold or platinum account, as well as team and classroom options as well. But again, if you want more details on Padlet, be sure to check out the tutorial video, which is linked for you in the description box. In this video, I'm gonna focus on eight Padlet updates that have come out this year that I think are most relevant or useful for teachers. Features, starting with number one, which is the ability to create slideshows. Padlet will allow you to take an existing Padlet and immediately turn it into a slideshow with just a few clicks of a button. So let me show you what that might look like. Let's say I have this Padlet where my students have put questions or comments or discombobulations. My sixth grade teacher used to always say that to us. It essentially means confusions. We're in for an epic, confusing showdown. And throughout the lesson, my students have compiled their thoughts onto this Padlet. At the end of the lesson, I might want to go through those questions and comments and discombobulations as a slideshow. It's just a little bit easier and a more visual way to look at it. In order to do that, all I have to do with the Padlet open is click the slideshow button. It looks like the little play button and it will automatically generate and format a slideshow for you. From here, you have a few different tools. So if I move my mouse around, I can have it automatically play. So if I click the play sign, after a few seconds, it's gonna automatically advance. And if you click on auto, you can change that time span to be what you want. You also can pause at any time if you would rather navigate through the slides on your own, which in order to do that, you can just click the arrows down here at the bottom. You also can share this slideshow. So if you're doing Doing maybe like a review before an assessment, you might share this out with family so they have access at home. You can share it as links, you can embed it onto an existing website, share through apps, you can save it as images or PDF files, there's tons of different options. And then you can go into full screen mode by clicking that button there at the bottom. I think this is a perfect way to look over student responses in an easier format versus trying to like click and open every single post so that it's more visible. You can just use the slideshow option and it will make it full screen. As I mentioned, I think it's also great for reviewing for assessments. Maybe you have created a Padlet for the unit just full of links to websites and videos and pictures of student work samples from the unit. Then you can go through it and review using that slideshow at the end before the assessment. The second new update is the ability to group posts by sections. Now, a while ago, Padlet had a format or a layout called shelf, which allowed you to create columns in order to organize information. And I loved it, but now you can actually incorporate that into other formats, including the wall, the grid, the timeline, the maps, there are so many different options. So now when you make a Padlet, you will see those options available. So if you click make a Padlet, the most popular one would be that wall, which is just kind of the compilation of all the posts. So there is now the basic wall, as well as the wall with sections, which is what was previously known as shelf. But if you scroll down under simple formats, there are these advanced formats where you have those sections available. So there is the timeline with sections, 
grid width sections, stream width sections, wall width sections, which was also at the top because that is most popular, as well as the map width sections. Just to show you what this could look like, I'm gonna choose the grid width sections. It's going to create my Padlet. We're just gonna title it example. We're gonna skip over all the rest. From here, if I close out of the settings, I now have this section, which I can click the three dots and I can rename it. So this might be reptiles click done. I can then add another section. So click add section. This one might be birds done. Then within each of those different sections or categories, I can add posts. So I can click the plus sign in order to add a post. So for example, snake. I can click publish and it will post it under that section. The great thing is you can take an existing Padlet that maybe you had previously created that does not have sections and you can add sections into it. So for example, if I have this timeline with Michelle being born in 1993, I can click on the settings gear over on the right I can scroll down and where it says group post by section, I can toggle that on and you'll notice it automatically created section one. So I might rename this as childhood and click done. From there, I can add additional sections. So you can convert an existing Padlet to have sections by using that option. I personally think the sections are great for categorizing information. You might even have students dump a bunch of examples onto a Padlet, and then you can add in those sections and start to group the posts. So for example, you might have different characters from stories or character traits, and then you're attributing them to different characters. You might have different math strategy. So you might put a problem up, students solve it, and then you group it depending on the strategies that they used. The third update is the ability to search and filter posts. There are so many different ways that you can use this feature. I'm going to open back up that share your thoughts Padlet. Let's go ahead and color code some of these. So I'm going to click the three dots. Let's make this one red. We'll make this one green and blue and we'll throw some purple in there. I'm just kind of attributing random colors. We'll go red again, we'll go yellow, get another green, we'll leave that one white, and then we'll do another blue. Okay, now within this Padlet, I have the search option up here at the top. So I could search by text. So for example, if I want to find questions or comments that have a certain term in them, I'm just gonna use the number two. It will pull up all of the posts that have that number two, or I could search the word comment and it will pull up all of the posts that had the word comment. I also have the ability to filter. So I'm going to X out of that search, click again and notice that little filter icon. I'm going to click it. And from here, I can choose to show only certain posts depending on the filter I apply. So I could show just published posts, submitted posts, scheduled posts. We're gonna come back to that. I could filter by color. So for example, I could show just the red posts or I could show red and yellow. I can reset it and show just the blue posts. So it's a really quick and easy way to pull up specific posts. Now, as you saw, as soon as I clear that filter or delete the text that I was searching for, it returns to normal. So I'm not deleting posts, I'm just displaying certain ones at certain times. You can also search by the author or the contributor. So if you want to pull up a specific student's post, you can type in their name and it will pull it up. So just a few ideas of how you might use this. Let's say a student made a post on a Padlet. They really want you to share it. You're struggling to find it because there's so many posts. You can search for their name or you could place students into teams and you could have their posts color coded based on their team. And then you could review just one team's responses at a time. Or again, you could color code them by the strategies that they're using and then kind of color code or filter out the colors in order to display certain strategies and be able to compare them. The fourth update is the Google Drive integration. So for a while, you've been able to link to things within Google Drive by copying and pasting the link, but now you can upload files directly from Google Drive. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new post. So I'm gonna just click that plus sign. 
From here, I'm going to click the three dots in order to show all those different post options. And you will notice right here in the middle is the Google Drive and it tells me it is new if I click it. When it is the first time you are using this feature, you do have to connect your Google Drive just like you do with all other apps and websites. So I'm gonna click connect. It's gonna prompt me to choose my account. I'm going to give it access, click continue. And now I'm able to select files directly from my Google Drive. I love that it pulled up the random GoPro footage from my honeymoon when we were snorkeling. You're a nice guy, Jim, but you have no idea how to vacation. I might type in exit ticket, just see what comes up. Okay, I might use this exit ticket example. Once I click select, it's going to upload that file. And once I publish it, I then can click and be able to access that file. Now, if you are adding a Google Doc, Google Slides, or Google Sheets, it will post it as a link, but if you are uploading an image or a video, it will actually upload it directly into the Padlet. The fifth update is the ability to schedule posts. This one is so exciting because it means you can prep in advance. Let's say I have this weekly discussion Padlet and maybe this is going to be September. We want it in all capital letters, September. Click done. I can actually schedule these like weekly posts to show up without me having to do anything in real time. It will automatically post. I can click the plus sign and let's say this is gonna be week one and we'll put example discussion question. Instead of clicking publish, I'm gonna click the button right next to it. It looks like a little clock and it says set a future published date. Once I click that, I have the option to choose the exact date and time that I want it to post. So maybe I want this to come up on September 4th at let's do 9.15 a.m. I can select that choose set date, schedule, and I can see that post, but any of the other students who are on that Padlet will not be able to see it until it goes live. This is fantastic, as I mentioned, for getting ahead. You could schedule weekly discussion posts or different unit materials as the year goes, but you can do it ahead of time. That way you don't have to worry about getting too busy and forgetting. Update number six is kind of similar. You can now save posts as drafts. So if you start writing a post and let's say you accidentally close out of your browser, that draft post will still be there. Just to show you how this works, I'm going to start typing a post. So example draft, and I'm just gonna kind of leave that up there. I'm gonna close out of this weekly discussion. So I did not post it onto the Padlet. All I did was type it. I'm gonna open it back up. And now down at the bottom, you will see where it says example draft. I can now click and resume that post. The seventh update is the availability to create polls within Padlet. So let's say as part of my weekly discussion, I want to be able to survey my students' thoughts on something. Survey says eh. When I go to create the post, I can click those three dots again to see all of the options. And right next to Google Drive, I now have poll. From here, I can ask a question. So does pineapple belong on pizza? Obviously the answer is yes, but we'll give them some different choices. Of course, maybe, and absolutely not. <laughs> From there, I can click add, and I can even add in additional text with that poll. So like, let me know your thoughts. I can publish that. From there, my students would be able to vote on the poll. I can see the votes and the results in real time. I can choose to show the results. So I can show that percentage and my students can't see the results unless I choose to show it to them. So they would have to vote first. That way they're not influenced by anyone else's. I can also close the poll if I want to stop them from voting. So I can click the three dots and then I can come down where it says close poll and it kind of locks it in place. Now, if I want to reopen the poll, I can follow those same directions. So I can click the three dots and then I can reopen the poll. Also worth noting, this works within that slideshow feature. So if I click the slideshow and I move on to that post, 
I can vote right there on the poll. And if I share this with students, so if I use that share button and I share the link to the slideshow, they can then vote on the poll in real time as they're viewing the slideshow. The eighth and final update I wanted to share is the availability to add tags and mentions. This will allow you to tag specific individuals in order to get their attention. So within a post, I'm going to do example post. You can just type the at sign like you do on most social medias and you can start to type the person's name or their email, however they were added in. So for example, the Emerson's 2020 click and it will tag them in that post. Now, if you are using Padlet within an organization such as a school or district, you will be able to tag anyone within that organization. If you are using Padlet outside of an organized account, such as a school or district account, like mine is just a personal account, you can tag anyone that has been added as a contributor. So if I go into my share settings, you will see that I invited the Emerson's 2020, which is my joint account with my husband, to this Padlet, that's why I was able to tag it. Now there have been plenty of other updates with Padlet recently, especially around privacy and content moderation, but I felt that those were the eight biggest and most useful updates specifically for teachers and classroom use. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Leave a comment down below. Which feature are you most excited about? As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.